including extensive tours with Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor, Les Brown, Mark Victor Hansen, and Brian Tracy. Chuck is here today to share some ideas designed to create immediate and lasting results for your personal and professional effectiveness, as well as the opportunity to attend a very special event called Success Summit 2013. So please join me in a warm welcome for our guest speaker, Mr. Chuck Douglas. Great to be here tonight. I appreciate the introduction. I got introduced two weeks ago. A guy called me Doug Chuckless, not Chuck Douglas. So thank you, Randall, for not, for not messing up. You are doing the number one thing that people that earn over $200,000 a year do as part of their regimen. Guess what it is? Networking. Yeah, it's not drinking. It's networking, right? You're networking. So my congratulations to you tonight. You're, you're, you're doing something, one of the habits of individuals that make over 200000 a year. One of my heroes growing up was a gentleman named Zig Ziglar. How many of you are familiar with Zig already? A lot of you are. He had a great quote. I want to honor him tonight. Zig says that motivation is like a really good shower. Doesn't last very long, but you better take one every day. And I like that. So just a little bit of rah-rah before we get into some habits of individuals that earn great money, how you can double and triple your income here tonight. Please repeat after me. I will make, I will make 2013, 2013 my best year ever. My best year ever. Now look to two people right now in the eye with some enthusiasm <laughs> and tell them you are an amazing networker. Go. You are, you are an amazing, amazing networker. networker. You are an amazing 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 networker. Awesome. All right. You are amazing. Good job, everyone. That, that's all the, that is all the motivation you're getting tonight. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for coming. No, just kidding. You will need this sheet. Please look at your handout. Grab the second sheet. If you knew tonight that I was about to give you information that would double and triple your income, would you take copious notes tonight, yes or no? Yes. yes. This print freezes the truth. Jot these notes down tonight. Jot these ideas down. Everything that I will do this evening revolves around one word and one word only. And that is, jot this word down at the top of your note sheet. It is the word habits. Habits will change your life forever. So a thought, reap an action. So an action, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character, reap a destiny. You are here tonight with your money, with your relationships, where you are in this world because of your what? Habits. Of your habits. They control everything. Habits are things that you do without even what? Not even thinking about it. Um, I'm a uh, Team USA Olympian. I, I ran the Masters Olympics uh, last year. I'm a 1,500 meter runner. And to get to that level of competition, I had to run 8 to 10 miles a day to get to that level, right? Some days I get home, I sit on the couch, big mistake, uh, before I go out to run. I don't want to run, but I do because of my what? Habits. Of the habits. So some of you may want to do things. Maybe you're, you're climbing the hill of success right now. You want to be successful. You want to make more money. Maybe you've run out of energy some days. Maybe you don't want to prospect. You don't want to build here. You don't want to do this. What will get you through it are a great set of habits tonight. So what are those habits? And by the way, quick question for you. Would you agree with me that the habits of a top $200,000 income earner are significantly different than the habits of someone struggling for money. Would you agree? Yes. They're totally different, right? The, the habits are totally different. I read an article um, geez, three months ago in Barron's Magazine. Barron's Magazine did a survey. They found out that 79% of Americans get up every day living paycheck to paycheck. to paycheck, right? I don't think they like it. I don't think people get up in the morning and, and say, uh, Woo! Yeah, baby, huh? Ah, great day to be broke, isn't it? Yeah! Right? They don't do that. They do it. These are good people with good intentions that are using the wrong set of habits. Of habits. So there are 10 habits tonight. Very quickly, we're going to roll about 40 miles an hour with gusts up to 100. So buckle up tonight. Number one, we're going to dive right into this. Habit number one 
If you're going to be in the top 2%, change your life, change your business, right now you must be a complete goal setter. This happens before you leave the house. This happens in the privacy of your own time. What do I mean by complete? I mean daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, and three to five year wealth building goals. Harvard Business School does a survey, they did it last year. They found out that only 3% of business professionals, right, have a complete set of, of goals. Right? It's okay. That alcohol causes a little delayed response, but I'll take anything I can get tonight. That is okay. I love the participation, man. Thanks, Eduardo. You're, you're the best, man. For a second. Only, th only 3%, though, of business professionals have a complete set of goals. Isn't that unbelievable? Those same 3 percenters, though, are in the top... 2% of income earners. So you're sitting here tonight and maybe you're asking yourself, wow, I really want to, to improve my income. I want to make more money, but I haven't been able to do it yet. I try, I fall back. I try, it hasn't worked. I try, it could be that maybe you just don't have a complete set of goals. So a couple of attributes, jot these down, A through D. A, goals should be in your head or written? written. The goals should be written. What gets written gets done. B, goals should be really general or very specific. specific. Thank you, Pat. Very specific. Your brain responds to specificity. Yeah. You just don't get up in the morning and say, well, I want to make more money this year. Mm -hmm. And your brain hands you a 20. Here's a $20 bill. How you doing with that, right? Mm -hmm. No, you want something more than that. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, you must write your goals as if you've already achieved them. Mm -hmm. Fake it till you make it. For you to become the person that you want to become, you have to act like that person along the way to becoming that person. The goals must be written in that format. And D, goals should have a reward attached to them. Action, reward, habit. When you take action and you get a reward, the action or the behavior becomes a becomes a habit. That is correct. So those of you that are here tonight saying, well, Chuck, the missing link for me could be this. Let me nail it down with a Tom Hopkins quote. Tommy says that goals that are casually set and lightly taken are freely abandoned at the first obstacle. So how are you doing tonight with a complete set of goals? If I were your coach and I ask you to produce right now a complete set of goals in accordance with what we've just discussed, give yourself a rating. Here's your, here's your scale, 1 to 10, okay? One is pathetic, <laughs> and ten is perfect, okay? How are you doing tonight? Are you pathetic? And by the way, be honest with yourself. You know, most people rate themselves 30% higher than they really are. It's kind of like the guy who jumps out of the 50-story building. You've heard that joke, haven't you? He jumps out of the building, and every floor on the way down, they heard him say, so far, so good. So far, so good. Bam. Rate yourself properly. How are you doing tonight? with your goal setting. One. Two, jot this down. The second character, attribute, habit that you must have. Pretty good sense of humor about you. How many of you have met somebody in the past couple weeks that couldn't take a joke? Just quick raise of hands. Anybody meet somebody that couldn't? <laughs> Angie, you have, um, you poked a little fun at them and, and how, how did they respond? It's that engineering personality just said. <laughs> <laughs> we have a technical term, engineering technical term, for people like that. They are called Pucker butts. <laughs> Never heard that before. You poke a little fun at them and they just can't take it. They, rawr, they pucker right up. Don't, is that okay, Randall? Can I get away with that tonight? They're pucker butts because they just can't take a joke. They're too wrapped up in who? Themselves. We say, well, wait a minute, Chuck. Where's the business application? How is that germane to my business? If I'm all wrapped up in myself and my little financial problems and my little relationship problems and all my little problems, and I'm wrapped <laughs> up in my problems, right? How, is that, how does that apply to business? Well, in business, you must serve people in their world. Agreed? Yeah. When you network, you have to ask people questions about them. You know, how did you get involved in the business? What do you like most about it? What would you change? What are the current trends? You have to ask riveting questions that get you out of you and allow you to serve people and meet people where they live. Agreed? Yeah. This is why you have to ask questions like, hey, if you were going to choose a, a business professional to, to meet this need for your business, WMI, what would be most important to you? 
We're, we're, sometimes we're so much of an expert, aren't we, that we tell people all the time what we want them to do. We tell them. We just kind of... We throw up all over them, right, with our information. Yes. Don't do that. Yes. Verbal vomit, verbal diarrhea. It's very important that we use humor. Can humor close deals? Yes. Can humor handle objections? Yes. Can humor endear people to you? Yes. All of those things, right? Humor makes you like a little acorn seed. You plant an acorn seed in the ground and water from 30 feet away moves right to the seed. Has the highest attractive principle in horticulture of any seed you put in the ground. So we need to plant you. You have to all be little what? Seeds. Little acorn seeds, right? Humor makes you attractive. So if any of you are here tonight and you're saying, Chuck, um, I need help. I mean, I'm, honestly, I need help with my humor. Okay, I'm going to help you. Therapeutic intervention time. Here we go. Please repeat after me. I will never take advice. I will never take advice. From anyone who is more messed up than I am. From anyone who is more messed up than I am. Give yourself a rating. Number two, your sense of humor. How are you doing? Number one, goal setter. A complete goal setter. Number two, sense of humor. Number three, you must be an excellent communicator. Number three, you must be an excellent communicator. People need to believe you when you speak. When you give them your value propositions, when you're handling objections, closing the deal, telling them how great your products are here tonight, you need to be able to have them believe you. Agreed? Yes. The quality of your communication isn't what you think it is. It's what other people receive. You know, it's really interesting. Um, I, our corporate condo is over in Sandy Springs, and I, I called a real estate agent up a couple of months ago. And I asked this guy, I said, is now a good time for me to buy real estate in Sandy Springs? And the guy looks back and he made the biggest mistake that people make when they communicate. He looked back and he said, Chuck, he said, now is a great time to buy real estate in Sandy Springs. <laughs> it's a great time, right? And, and we laugh and it's funny, yet we go out and sometimes we do that because we don't pay attention to the habits that we have. It's imperative that congruency, jot this word down in your notes, it's called congruency. Congruency is when your words, your body language, and your tonality are all in what? Alignment. They are in alignment. Thank you, Cheryl. They are in sync. They are synchronous. If you want people to believe you, you must be synchronous when you communicate. Lined up. Believable. Okay? So if I walk in here tonight and I say, don't be alarmed. We have a very, very small problem here tonight. Very small problem, right? Okay, that's not synchronous. Or I can assure you, your money this year, your pay raises are going to be huge. Huge, right? There's, it's not right. But when you communicate, sometimes that fear of rejection sets in. And we get a little bit uh, non-congruent. Uh, Earl Nightingale used to say, I'm not who I think I am, and I'm not who you think I am, but I am who I think you think I am. <laughs> <laughs> it means we care a lot about what we think other people are going to what? Think about it. So we're so concerned with, with what people think, and, and, and we lose track of our communication. We don't communicate from the heart, from the core, from the belief system that we have. We communicate from what we think other people might what? think about us and, and we allow that to intimidate us and we allow that, allow that to affect or influence our communication and we lose track of the things we should be doing with our congruence, uh, our congruency factor. So number three, give yourself a rating. Are you a good communicator? Are you a congruent communicator? And you say, well, Ch Chuck, how do I tell? How do I know? Well, here's a great way to tell. How's your money? How's your business doing? People that are congruent communicators, people believe them. Their businesses are doing well. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, the, the, the barometer of a successful business is the income, the prospecting stream, unless they're in a not-for-profit. If your business isn't on the uptick, you take a look at it and go, wow, you know what? Maybe I do have something to learn. Maybe I don't know everything. Maybe I need to regroup. Maybe I need to reevaluate and say, hmm, how can I improve this? Tony Robbins taught me something years ago when I worked with him. He said there's a Japanese word called kaizen, and it means it's constant and never-ending improvement. We always have to ask ourselves, what areas can we improve in, right? So number three, how are you doing tonight? 
with your ability to communicate. Are you believable? Number four, jot this down. The fourth habit tonight is this. Number four, you must monetize your social media efforts. Monetize? You must monetize. You must be able to build a network of relationships, of professionals through social media. How many of you right now um, would say you're doing a pretty good job of monetizing using your Facebook fan pages for your business, your LinkedIn profiles to research, your Twitter for marketing campaigns. You're making money, doing a pretty good job. Just a quick, quick raise of hands. How many of you are doing a pretty good job with that? Okay? It's usually about 8 to 10% of the room is doing something. Facebook fan pages, tagging photos. Some people in our world today in business don't even know how to tag a photograph in Facebook. I mean, is that unbelievable? Right? And, and, and yet, you know, J.C. Penny used to say, I'd rather have 1% of the efforts of the 99 than I would have 99% of my own efforts. So does social media allow you to be seen by other businesses, yes. by other customers? I mean, if you do a great job, you know, I did a, um, a video for a lady at our big event the other day at the uh, Cobb Galleria. She asked me, you know, I, I take her product, and she said, Chuck, would you do a testimonial? I said, sure. We did this testimonial, and I did a little video. She popped it on all her social media. She had thousands of hits. Do you think that's going to help her business? Yes. I mean, th this is just one little thing. LinkedIn. How many of you have a LinkedIn profile? Yes, it's interesting. LinkedIn has 175 million users. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. 100, the average income of a professional on LinkedIn is 107 thousand dollars a year. These are people you want to know. These are people in your demographic that you want to meet. Uh, I did a, um, a big presentation for a technology company about four months ago downtown Atlanta and I found out through LinkedIn that the vice president of ops was a huge Atlanta Falcons fan, right? So I found this out through LinkedIn, through the social media, and he, he wasn't really, I shouldn't say a fan, he was a fanatic. So I began to research the Falcons. I went back through all of the, the history and the legacies and the players and, you know, the one Super Bowl appearance that they had prior, and I just... I, <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm glad I did the presentation four months ago and not this past week. But anyway, I walked in and I integrated that into my trust, rapport, and connection and credibility building process. Is that important yes. for all yes. of you to be able to do that? And at the end of the presentation, I'll never forget this, he looked at me, he said, Chuck, he said, man, I have never met anybody that knew as much about the Falcons as you do. And I said, he, and he asked me, he said, point blank, how long have you been a Falcons fan? I said, well, quite candidly, Joe, I said, I'm a Denver Broncos fan. <laughs> and ruined all my trust and credibility. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I said, I, I haven't been a Falcons fan very long. I said, I knew it was important to you I wanted to research and honor you by discussing things that were important that you liked, so I did the research and did the homework. Do you think that contributed to us getting the contract? Yes. was everything. So do you research clients? Do you research people before you meet them? Do you know how to go through that whole process and, and, and meet people and get to the, know people that know people that know people that you need to know to form those relationships, build those networks through your Twitter, through your LinkedIn, through your Facebook, through your YouTube, through your videos, your blogging. Your, all this is so important, and I can't possibly touch this tonight in great detail, but I will tell you this. When you learn to monetize social media, your business will explode. Number four, give yourself a rating. How are you doing tonight with your ability to monetize social media? Number five, jot this down. This is critical. If you're going to make big money in business, Dale Carnegie used to say, the sweetest sound to, to the ear is the sound of your own what? So you have to learn how to remember someone's name. name. How many of you ever have forgotten a name in the past month? Anybody? <laughs> and how many? Uh, today, okay, good, honest, honest. And how many of you who didn't have your hands up have a problem with lying? Anybody? <laughs> no? Just kidding. Remembering names, is, is, it, is it hard? It, it's difficult, isn't it? We're not born with this innate, this innate ability to... I always get this, people tell me, Oh, Chuck. 
but I'm so good at remembering faces. <laughs> I'm like, well, welcome to the club, man, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, I don't walk up to, uh, to Erica and say, you're Erica, right? But man, I just can't place your face. <laughs> but I know you're Erica. People don't do that. It's, you, it's the name that's the hard thing to remember, right? So why do people forget names? What, what do you think? Too busy. What is it, Too Pat? On their plate. Too busy, okay. And then you got to use stupid tricks, you know, like, well, how do you spell your name? <laughs> you know, oh, it's B-O-B, Bob, -B, <laughs> Bob, okay. You know, so, I mean, you don't want to have to do that. You want to be able to remember. Here's why people forget names, okay. They forget names because I'm speaking right now at about 250 words a minute. If you put a little stopwatch on, okay, an old counter, 250. Give me a Red Bull, yeah. 300. <laughs> A little monster drink, 350, right? But the key is, you're listening, though, at about 1,100 words a minute. So 250, 1,100. There's a big gap there. So many of you here tonight, right now, sitting here tonight, are having at least a couple of conversations with yourself <laughs> right now, aren't you? In your head. Mm -hmm, what am I going to be doing later? Yeah. Oh, yes, Chuck. Yes, Chuck. You know what's interesting about people is that the ability to concentrate, not only for children when they study, but for adults when they, when they go out and endeavor to pursue tasks and bring things to completion. The ability to concentrate is a huge, huge character. It's a huge attribute for people that are successful. Concentration. A lot of people have four or five projects going on at one time. They don't complete them. Uh, these are people that don't make a lot of money. So remembering names is key. Why and how can you remember names better? Well, let me give you a couple of tips. Jot this down, if you will. Number five, remembering names. Two tips, very quickly. A, when you meet somebody, stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing and clear your mind. Oh, my goodness gracious. Put your cell phone down. Stop thinking about what you're going to be doing later. Put it down and clear your mind and anticipate so, something that's going to be given to you that people want you to remember a name you begin to become associated with a professional, an intelligent individual. Uh, people that can't remember things are not associated with being very professional. Would you agree? Yes. And the, so you don't want that association in your business. You, you don't want that association right off the bat. You, you want to be able to get the association of, hey, I can remember. If I can take care of and remember this, I'm going to remember this. I'm going to take good care of your business. So first, stop what you're doing. Clear your mind and step two, jot this down, focus on what you're about to receive. Have some anticipation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, look forward to them giving you something that you're going to take really good care of, the name. I'm going to take good care of it. I'm going to use it. I'm not going to overuse it, right? You don't want to overuse somebody's name. If I, if I walk over here and, hi, I'm Chuck, you are? Stephanie. Stephanie? Stephanie, Stephanie, Stephanie. <laughs> Sorry, Stephanie. Too much, right? You know, but, but, but properly and strategically placed throughout the conversation, I begin to endear people. Uh, I begin to use their name, and they understand that I really what? Care. care. Thank you. So this is the key. People want to do business with people that care. Yes, they do. And it, it's a proof, not just, oh, I care. It's, it's proof that you care, showing them by an action. Number five, remembering names. How are you doing right now with that skill set? One to ten. Number six, jot this down very quickly. Number six, you must be able to master the art of gathering referrals. You must be able to ask for referrals. Turn to page three of your handout very quickly, if you would, please. Page three. One of the things that we do, we use an incentive. It's a great step to use for you. I use a Brian Tracy audio. How many of you are familiar with Brian Tracy? Quick raise of hands. A lot of you are in the room. He is a masterful sales speaker, trainer, and peak performance expert. He has what I consider to be, and I've done a, a, a myriad of audios in my time, I would consider this to be the best sales audio you will ever listen to, ever. It's called Be a Sales Superstar. It is phenomenal. We use this to incent people to provide us with referrals. So let me illustrate something very quickly, if I may. Um, have all of you so far here tonight enjoyed my presentation? Yes. yes. Appreciate that. Thank, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. That is a confirmation question. When you're doing business with people, before you proceed to the next step, 
And good sales professionals, good business professionals, know all of the steps of the sale. Agreed? Yes. They know where to go. They navigate. They orchestrate. They have. They understand where they're heading. They're not just there, you know, shooting blanks. They're not just there going one direction, going another. They know where they're going. So confirm it. Do you have any other questions? Uh, do you see how my products will work for you? Do you see how being involved with this activity, how using me for your video, uh, how using me for this, how getting involved with this residual income opportunity, how, how, how the financial aspects and parameters of your retirement that I presented to you, do you see how these would work for you? Nail it down. Boom. Okay. Then ask for the referral. And by the way, I didn't get a chance to do this yet, so I'll do it very quickly. A great referral for me is any group that has a meeting of professional people like all of you here tonight that want to get better. You came here tonight and you want to make more money, agreed? Yeah. Yeah. Some of you have tried, 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 you haven't done it yet. Some of you are doing very well. I don't know who the, those people are here tonight, but you came here wanting to improve the quality of your life. True or true? True. 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 To do that, you have to be able to ask for referrals. It is a networking-based opportunity. Uh, in everything that we do today. Yeah, we're in a people business. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Everything is about people. It's about relationships. So great referrals for me are people like that with meetings. So I'll just go ahead and throw this out there for all of you. Those of you who are kind enough, and I'll just thank you in advance for doing it. When you list tonight two referrals, that is decision makers, their telephone number, their company name, and their name, if you'll list a minimum of two and then put your email address up here, I will send you the link, complimentary link, to the best sales audio. This will help you close a deal, make money immediately. It is that good. It's Brian Tracy's. Okay? So, now let me give you the question that you want to ask people with this. Okay? Here's your referral question. Jot this down. It's an open-ended question because when you ask referral questions, you want to make sure they are what? They are open-ended, not closed-ended. Okay, closed-ended questions uh, get a yes or no answer. For example, um, um, you wouldn't happen to know anybody, would you? Right? Really bad question. Do you know someone is a closed-ended question. Okay, and the, the, the typical response to that is, do you know anybody? And they say what? No. I don't know anybody. What? You know anybody? Everybody knows somebody. Now, don't say that to them. But you want to ask an open-ended question. Here it is. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, uh, wherever you are in the process, okay, who comes to mind? You want them to what? Think. You want them to think. You want to engage their mental capacity. Who comes to mind that could benefit from a, a great opportunity with Organo Gold, uh, the, 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 where you could add two, five, ten, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars a month to your income? Who comes to mind that could use a great financial uh, planner that could help you get to your goals, risk reward ratios, uh, so you can retire and live the way you want to live? Who comes to mind that could benefit? Are you with me on this? Yeah. Okay, this is the key. These are great questions, but it takes courage, it takes confidence to stand up and ask these questions. Do you know? And I know, Monica, you know this because you attended our event, but you know 50% of all sales and business scenarios end up without the person asking for the order. Isn't that amazing? 50%. So it's not difficult for you to make money. All you have to do is you have to do the things that unsuccessful people are not willing to do. Unsuccessful people don't have the courage to step up and ask for things, but successful people do. Every single level that I've given you here, our research indicates is worth about $5,000 per level. So if you go from a two to a three, five grand to your annual income. Three to a four, 5,000. If you do one level in all 10, you've added $50,000 to your income in a year. You don't have to be that excellent. You just have to sharpen your ax up what? Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 10, 10 says, a person who chops wood with a dull axe takes a lot longer to do the job. Isn't that, isn't that true? It's funny, isn't it? Because you know, well, it, some people have such dull axes, their axe hits the wood and it bounces back and hits them in the head. <laughs> right? You don't have to be that much better, but you do have to have a reasonably sharp what? Axe. The 20-80 rule applies, the Pareto principle. You've heard it before, haven't you? Yeah. What does that mean? 
20% of most groups, of most companies, of most sales companies, of most business leads associations, 20% of the group is doing what? So 80% of the people in the group have to split up 20% of the income. You don't want to be in the 80, you want to be in the 20. 20% 20 percenters have sharp axes. They ask for referrals, number six. Give yourself a rating. Number seven, number seven, you must be able to handle objections. You must be able to handle objections effectively. How do most people handle an objection? Uh, they get a little bit what? Defensive. Don't they? Yeah, what is your name? Francis Fongan. Francisco? Francisco, right. Francis Fongan. Right. Francisco, nice to meet you. They get a little defensive, don't they? They do. Just, just a little bit like, you, you know, what'd you say to me? <laughs> My price is too high. Come here. I'm going to lay you out, brother. <laughs> no, don't do that. Now listen, here's a fact for you. In 2012, the average sale took three objections to close. So two rules that we need to understand. When somebody gives you an objection, get excited, right? What could you say to yourself when somebody gives you an objection? Great. Yes. Yeah, yeah, baby. One down, two to go. Boom, right? <laughs> that don't, don't do that in front of them. <laughs> but, but, but you can tell a lot about someone and the way they handle, um, they handle obstacles or they handle objections by the way they look. Would you agree? Yes. I can tell a lot about all of you here tonight by simply looking at the way you're sitting, the way your face is, the way you're taking notes, what you're doing, your body language, that DISC profile, that DIS profile that we taught in the event. It's everything. You can, when you know someone's personality, you can relate to them a lot easier. And therefore, if you can relate to them easier, then if they are a qualified prospect, you can sell to them much easier. Agreed? Right. Yes. It's very powerful. So one, just a rule, get excited when somebody gives you an objection, okay? Yes. Second rule, second rule, dance with people. Don't box. <laughs> dance with them. Don't box. Do the front of stare, okay? Don't do the... Uh, you know, the Sugar Ray Leonard, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Dance, not box. Let me give you a couple of um, pieces of verbiage that will help you handle objections in your business. Somebody tells you um, your price is too high, they can't afford it. Uh, one of the things I would definitely tell people is, look, you know, I, and of course, you always want to empathize with people first, right? Empathy, validate, handle. Empathy, validate, handle is your overarching framework for handling objections. When somebody says they want to go with a lower price or they can't afford it, I would say, well, look, you're right. There are a lot of other options out there that are lower in price. Hmm? If you're willing to take that risk, okay? When you say that to someone, they automatically go, wow, you mean there might be a risk associated with going with a lower price provider? Is it true? Might there be? Right. Yeah. There might be quality, service, expertise, who knows? But you need to be able to do that so you can contrast your value proposition with the value proposition of the competition, therefore differentiating yourself. Here, though, is my favorite objection handling phrase, and it very simply goes like this. Uh, we don't have it in the budget. We don't have the time. We don't have this. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, I totally respect that. And just a quick question for you. You obviously have a good reason for saying that. Do you mind if I ask what it is? Okay. Very consultative, very low-key. If you can't handle an objection effectively, you won't make as much money. Is that a true statement? Yes. So give yourself a rating. Number seven, how are you doing right now? Are you quick to defend or are you an empathizer? Empathize, validate, handle. Okay? Number eight, number eight, you must be an excellent closer. An excellent closer. Closers, I have, my friend Steve Black has a great quote. He's my partner in the business and he said, uh, if you can't close, you will probably have very skinny children. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, you know, if you can't close the deal, you don't make the money. Some people are really good at, how, at making friends. And they're, they're like, you know, they, they get relationships and, and they can make friends really well. But when it comes down to asking for the money, asking for the business, asking for the commitment, there's a little trepidation, right? It's like... I don't want to ask them, you know, to do it because they might think I'm like, trying to make some money or something. 
And typically, typically, here's the situation. If, if somebody had something to say that was professional, that they rehearsed, that they knew would work and be okay, they would probably say it. Agree? Yeah, so, the, the, I mean, the thing is, people aren't prepared. People don't study. Accountants, doctors, lawyers, you know, uh, uh, financial professionals, they have to have continuing education, don't they? Yes. Right, but what about sales? I mean, people are out there trying to sell, trying to build a business. They're not educated, right? They don't know what to say. They don't know what to do because they haven't studied. You think you can build a $200,000, a $1 million business without proper business education? <laughs> it doesn't happen. Right? So it's key to understand this. So let me let me give you a phrase that will help you today. Jot this. Let me give you two. Okay. Closing doesn't just happen at the end. Closing happens all the way through the entire process. Okay? You're building rapport, you're building trust, you're building credibility, you're remembering their name, you're using it, you're building the foundation, your humor, you're doing well, all of these things. Then at the end, it's just a mere transition. Okay? So let me give you a transitional phrase. Here it is. Mr. or Mrs. Customer, the next step is this. The next step is. And we'll take care of all of the details. People are burdened with details. Boy, I tell you what, if you're in a business that has a lot of, of steps to it, the customer is looking. I just talked to a lady today who owns a flooring company. She said, Chuck, one of the things that, that we struggle with the most is people can't get their arms around, you know, i got to get this together and, and the install and the measurements and, and, and the kind and the type and the floors and the house. And there's so many what? Details. And one little phrase helps double their closing ratio, which is very simply, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, the next step is to go ahead and get the installation date scheduled. And let me just tell you this, we'll take care of all the what? Details. And to delineate those details, list them. Tell the customer what you're going to take care of. You will? Oh, that's great. So now they're not as burdened, and the, ch the probability of you getting that sale goes way up. Here's one more phrase for you that you can use. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, this is called the invitational close. Okay? It's Mr. and Mrs. Customer, why don't you just go ahead and give it a try? It's very innocuous. It's very low-key. Uh, did, 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 after you nail it down, did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Did you see how it makes sense for you? Do you see how doing this and this can help this and this? Good, yes, yes, yes. Look, well, great. Why don't you go ahead and just give it a try? Okay, we will. Perfect. The next step is this. Bam. And you close the deal. You made the money, and they didn't. So this is key. Number eight, how you doing with your closing skill? Is it good? Okay, number eight. Number nine. This is a biggie. Number nine, very quickly. Number nine. You must become, if you're going to hit a home run in business, my friend Bob Proctor used to say, you can't get up at the crack of noon and become successful, right? But there's a lot of people that have this entitlement philosophy. They think just because they're in business, they can, I have a home-based business, don't I? Yeah, I can get up at 10 in my pajamas. I can stay at home and I can just, oh, I got a home-based business. What? Don't you have to have discipline to have a home-based business? Yes. Don't you have to get up at 5 or 6 o'clock, still do your reading, do your study and plan your day the night before? Aren't those all professional habits of people, whether you're in the office or you're at home? So number nine, you've got to become more of an action taker. Action takers are money makers. Bob Proctor gave me the privilege of giving some great advice in my fourth year in this industry. He said, Chuck, would you like your annual income to become your monthly income? Your annual income to become your monthly income. It only took me about 10 seconds. I was making $30,000 a year. And he goes, would you like your annual to become your monthly? And I went, I'm making 30, 30 times 12, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty quick, right? The next year, I exceeded that. And I don't say that to focus on myself. I say that to focus on there were two steps that, 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 that caused that. And they are this. If you want to get self-motivated here tonight and you need an extra shot of energy, of passion, of something to get your business off the ground this year, two steps. Jot them down. A and B. A, you have to learn how to hold yourself personal what? Accountability. Personal accountability. Here's the definition. We all say it like we understand it, right? i got to be personally accountable, Chuck. Yes. But here's the key. you got to know what it means. Personal accountability means this. 
you can't blame anything outside of who? You know, if it's going to be, it's up to me. How many of you know somebody who is a, a, a chronic excuse maker? Anybody know somebody like that? You do, Cheryl? Well, what area is it in that they make excuses? Oh, well, my business isn't this way because of everybody else. The economy. Right. Right. Or, uh, you know somebody that's always late, right? Anybody know somebody like that, always late? Yeah. And you ask them, oh, why were you late? And they go, what? Oh, it was the traffic. traffic. It was the right. Yeah, not God. God. God didn't make you late. But there's always an excuse, right? It's, it's amazing. There's always an excuse. Here's the key. I taught my kids this. My kids are straight A students in college. Now, they weren't when they first started, but I taught them the memory. I taught them not to make excuses, and it's a process. But when you make excuses for things, is your homework done, John Luke? Oh, my homework's not done. Why isn't it done? Well, because my, my friend called me, and, and we talked on the phone for a while, and what'd you talk about? Well, he was having a hard time, so you chose to talk to your friend and do this over doing your homework. You could have done this a little different way, and you know, we, we talked about it. But if he can make that excuse again, then the behavior doesn't what? Change. It doesn't change. Same with us, right? Well, I didn't make my calls today. I took off early. I did this. I did that. Because you've got to hold yourself personally accountable. If I were your coach today... And I had the sheet right here that was a goal report. And I wanted to say to you, let's say, Pat, um, tomorrow, well, tomorrow's Saturday, um, Monday, what are your goals? And Pat would tell me. And I would say, Pat, I'm your coach. Here's my fax number. I want you to list your results down, uh, everything you accomplished in accordance with your goals on Monday. Just the fact that Pat knew somebody's looking at my results, <laughs> would it make her more conscientious? Oh, yes. True, right? It's, it's, it's really easy to quit and be lazy when nobody's looking. Right. Oh, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's looking at your performance, you're under the light. People know you've got an accountability buddy, a mentor, a coach, somebody under you're under their tutelage. Oh my gosh. Your performance will go so high because your talent is oozes out and your work ethic oozes out. And when you do that and you put in a good 8, 10, 11, 12 hours a day of productivity, will your money change? Yes. Yes. It's unbelievable. Most sales professionals work two and a half hours a day. That's the average. They're drinking coffee. They're, 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 they're listening to stuff. They're on the internet. They're looking. They're talking. They're goofing. They're surfing. They're whatever. But they're not doing the things that produce money. That's B. You must action, reward, habit. Okay? This means that you can't reward yourself until you achieve your, Go. your goals. Don't be Mr. or Miss Stress Relief. I know, you, I know, princess, you had a hard day. I know you did, right? But we, what we do is we... We give ourselves a reward when we don't achieve our goals, right? And what happens is you train your brain to do what? Nothing. You know, I don't hit my goals, but I still go out and party. I don't hit my goals, but I still go out and shop. I don't hit my goals, but I still go home and watch TV. I don't hit my goals, but I still go out. You're telling your brain, look, I don't care. You don't have to do anything. You're still going to get a reward. Are you with me on this? Yes. This is how people get lazy. You ever look at people and go, come on, you're so talented. You, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything. And they go, Ugh, I'm fine where I'm at. <laughs> That's what they do. How did they get there? You're not born that way. How did they get there? They got there. They lost the dream. They lost the passion, lost the excitement because they rewarded themselves for nothing. They trained themselves to do nothing. You can change your life just like that. By, by incorporating number nine. Give yourself a quick rating. Number ten, last idea tonight is this. Last idea, you must practice two words, self-development. Two words, self-development. Circle the word self. You have to invest in yourself. You say, well, Chuck, what, what do you mean invest in myself? Well, when you invest in you, you tell you that you are worth it. People ask me all the time, well, Chuck, why should we come? We've got a... Um, a big success summit coming up in April. Why should we be there around 450 other of Atlanta's top business professionals? Why should I invest in myself? Why should I go there? Number one reason, is it possible you might meet somebody there that could really add to your business, yes or no? Yes. This is the key. This is networking. This is building relationships. How do you invest in yourself? Two ways. Okay, real quick. A and B. A, you must, 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 must. 
make a habit of investing 3% of your gross back into you. It's not difficult. When I was making 30000 a year, I was investing 3% of 30000 Bless you. That's $900 a year. That's not much. That's three bucks a day, right? Over 200000 you're investing, you know, maybe 10, 15 bucks a day. Do people waste money yes. on stuff? Yes. What kind of stuff? Starbucks. I heard they changed the name of Starbucks to five bucks. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> 750 bucks, yeah. Because every time you go there, right, you spend at least $5. Well, Kirk can tell you. He's a financial whiz. He can tell you. Seven bucks a day times a year put into a proper a mutual fund or a proper index. I mean, right? Fifteen years later, are you kidding me? You can be a millionaire. But people still want to sit there and make their coffee every day, right? Listen, 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 listen. You've got to put that money into you so you can get educated, so you know what to say, you know what to do, you know where to go. A, 3%. B, jot this down. You've got to be a reader. Leaders are readers. B, you have to be an audio listener. You have to listen. Repetition is the mother of skill. And C, you have to attend a minimum of four symposiums, four events. You've got to be in the room with the people, learning, networking. This is the key. So, quick question for you. How many of you got at least uh, one good idea from our time together tonight? Raise a hand. Did you, did you get one good idea? Sure. What was it? Um, what did you get tonight that you really enjoyed? Anybody? Eduardo, what did you get tonight? Real quick. Um, what was the one idea? <laughs> Thank you, Eduardo. <laughs> what did you get tonight that you enjoyed? What was the most relevant for you? Monetizing, monetizing it. social media because I was how do you speak about that? I was thinking, okay, there are people who I'm trying to reach that may not even be on the internet. So how do you still reach them and also then reach the people who are all over the internet? So true. So. And you know what's interesting about that is that you don't have to necessarily, you can be, and we do teach this, and there's a great book that we have called 77 Tactics where you can uh, of social media success where you can go and learn how to conduct a marketing campaign on Twitter. And you can evaluate your identities and, and, and marketing and, and your money and everything. And you can do all that with the proper tools and software and everything. Yes, but just the basic elements of having a Facebook fan page, tagging photos, putting videos on, knowing how to research people on LinkedIn, building up your network, building up your network, building up your network. So while you're sleeping, you're making money. This is the key, right? This is monetization. So if you got a good idea from me here tonight... Man, I talked, I know I talked fast tonight. <laughs> I was moving. But I want to make sure that I got all the ideas out for you tonight. Imagine what you could get if we had you for a whole day. We could teach you. We could actually go through all of the critical areas. Let me ask you, was, were all of the habits I gave you tonight, were they relevant? Yes. So, so imagine getting all of these, becoming an expert in these and making these a habit. I've been asked very quickly just to give you a quick invitation to join us at what I will tell you is the best event you will ever attend in 2013 for your money. This is a phenomenal event. Please turn to the front of your sheets for just a moment, your color brochures. April the 4th at the Cobb Galleria. From 9 to 5.15, be there at 8, from 8 to 9 if you want to network and you want to meet people and hand out business cards on your own and do all of that. We do facilitate networking throughout the day as well. Did you enjoy my style of teaching tonight? Yes. yes. If you did, I am. Thank you, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, am, I, I speak for half today. My partner, Steve Black, as Monica will tell you, he is a genius. The guy's a multi-million dollar uh, earner. He has, he's helped businesses across the world. He is a social media goal-setting time mastery guru. He works with Brian Tracy one-on-one. -on -one. He is a master. He is the other speaker for the day. We are business partners together, myself and Steve Black. This event is going to be at the Cobb Galleria. Put this down. This is a must-attend event on April the 4th, Thursday. Now, those of you that are here today that want to come, you say, Chuck, I'd love to come. This is good timing for me. I'd love to be there and learn and network. Uh, how much does it cost? And how do I enroll in the program? Great questions. Jot this down, if you will. And put this down right here on this form, if you will, please, right here, upper right-hand side. It's on the back of your notes. But just up here, jot this down. This, by the way, is your success manual. Every note that we give, every screenshot, every script, Every objection handling, closing phrase, everything taught 
is in this manual. This is worth the price of admission. Just this manual is phenomenal. This 64-page success manual, in addition to $158 worth of downloads immediately available tonight. This is goal setting book, time mastery, closing the sale. By the way, put a five next to this closing the sale audio. You need to listen to this five times in a row as quickly as possible. This will increase your sales immediately, give you more confidence, give you some, some tools in your repertoire. $158 worth of downloads immediately available when I give you a ticket tonight with your code on it. Jot this down. Here is the investment for the program. $653 for the day, everything included. That is the VIP package. Now, some of you that's a lot of money, some of you it's a little bit of money. Quick question for you. If I were to give away a complimentary ticket tonight in a raffle, if I collected your business cards, selected one person, pulled a card out, and that person won a free admission uh, to the day on April the 4th, okay? And, and you were the one that won the ticket, how many of you would go and take the ticket? Let me see, show me. How many people? Keep, keep them up. Come on, let me see. Let me see. Good, 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 good. Okay. I've handled an objection with that question. Which objection did I handle? The money. Availability. I handled the time, right? Mm -hmm. If you, if it were free, you would go and take your valuable what? Time. And I appreciate that very much. I also have to handle the what? Time. I've got to handle the money, the, the money objection. Some people say it's a little, some people say it's a lot. Please jot this down. Action reward habit comes into play again. Those of you who would like to come, you make your reservation tonight. If you do that tonight, before I leave, I'll be here for about another 30 minutes or so. If you do do that, we're going to kick in almost $400. The investment is $299. You can also break that up into installments. One now, one in a month, one a month later. If you need anything more than that, please let me know. If you have a desire to go, we will find a way to get you there. $279 if you'd like to go, and it's a full pay. You can save $20 if you don't do the installments. If you have something you need to check on, say, Chuck, i got to check with my husband, my wife. Uh, I, I want to come, but i got to check some things. Fill out your form tonight before we leave. Put a four, I'll put a 48-hour hold on it. And those of you who would like to come, we'll wait a couple days. If you can come, great, and you'll still get the bonuses. I'll give you your ticket tonight, and you can enjoy all $158 of those bonuses. With that being said, one final question. I'm going to end with a quote. How many of you in the room tonight would say, based upon everything that you've heard, that you are thinking about joining us at the April 4th event? Quick raise of hands. Let me just see. One, two, three. 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. See me before I leave tonight. Uh, I'm sure um, I'll be here for about another 30 minutes or so. We're going to have a short break, right, Randall? Short break. You can come see me with those. Th those forms that you fill out are right here. I'll tear them off here. If you need a fresh one and you've written up here, I have the fresh ones as well. I'll save the questions for one-on-one. -on -one. Let me end with a great quote from Tony Robbins. Tony says this. He says, when you empty your wallet to fill up your head, your head will fill up your wallet instead. This is a huge axiom that we need to be able to get our hands around to get educated and to improve, to make more money, more skill, more money. Thank you for the privilege of being here tonight. A little round of applause for Randall for putting this together. For Lewis, for putting this together.